right, so something's going on here because the phones are already lighting up and we haven't even broken mic yet here. This is Patriots Lament, actually hour one. It's the Saturday morning wake-up call. Must be, must be some hate, haters. Hate, hating, hating haters that hate? No, I thought that was us. I thought that uh, those of us behind the microphones were the only ones that are capable of doing the hating. Everybody else is just reacting to that. Well, anyway, this well, is... Well, hate and discontent. <laughs> Discontent. Now, there's plenty of that going on around there. In the studio this morning, as always, from Big Man Enterprise. Oh, that's got to be a boogeyman. You think so? You want to just go straight to the phone and see if somebody is messing with it? Good morning. Let's see. Let's try that. Oh, you know what? I just zapped them all. Oh, Accidentally. 458 Talk is the number if you'd like to call and get in queue. A lot of people like us so much where they actually spend time to wake up on a Saturday morning not watch cartoons, but to call into our show to fill the line. Just just to try to disrupt so that other people can't get through. It would be so awesome. much more neatio if such person would call in and maybe have discourse with us, challenge debate, ideas. That's all we want to do. A good argument. <laughs> no, I'm just going to block their line so no one can go in. No, it, it, no, it, that that seems to be oh, the way, though, again. that that some people react in their entire life, Josh. It's not simply a matter of they don't like the way in which you talk, and and so they're going to, to try to argue against you, so that and to convince other people that you're wrong. They don't want anybody else to hear you. Yeah, and then no, 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 don't say that. Blah 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 blah. It's just like a little child. You ever seen kids where they don't like what the other one's saying? They put their hands over their ears and they go, la, 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 la. Quite often, actually. It's, it's funny because <laughs> that's, that's, that seems to be the reaction with some people. The funny part is that when they're blocking the phone lines, that doesn't keep us from... Doesn't keep us from talking? Doesn't keep us from talking. No, all it does is keeps other people from calling in and having a conversation with so us. So when they block our lines, it actually helps us because then all we have is two hours of us blabbing. Don't even have to feel bad about listening to someone else's point of view. Well, you know what? I, I, I still feel like you know there's a slim possibility that somebody's actually trying to get through. So, yep. Oh, hey, hey, oh. no, you're right. We just done. Uh, we have a blocker today. That's awesome. Man, I wish you had called. That's me. that's real. That's real fandom right there. And somebody likes the show so much that they're going to go straight to the phones. Good morning. Hello there. Whoa. Hey, we got somebody. What's on your mind? Who's this? This is Red. Red, are you the one that's been calling in trying to block the line? No, no. no all right, no. all right. What's, what's going like on today? Right? Well, they block it. I'd like to say one thing. When are we going to impeach this president and get him out of office? Boy, he's lied about everything from day one. Yeah, I was actually... first thing I was going to ask today was a little bit more on the states. I don't know if you saw... This uh, heard about on the radio, whatever the uh, on the state side here. In the last six years, and I might my facts might be a little bit off, but in the last six years, the state has taken in fifty billion dollars. State of Alaska in the last six years, and they sufficient. I don't get none. <laughs> <laughs> they sufficiently spent all fifty billion and have actually tapped into the reserves too. In six years, fifty billion plus. Boy, I'd like to have just a little bit of that. Yeah, I was just wondering how in the world, what in the world, man? Because they uh, they pulled the money from the boroughs, right? They don't do that sharing or whatever they used to call it. Yeah. Yeah. So it just boggled my mind because I know the fiscal conservatives have been in power for the last ten years at least. I don't understand that. So we, uh, the thing I was we've hearing, we've got boroughs that are shot all to hell. And they put millions and millions in down by Glen Allen every year, and it ain't never improved. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shit. fact. No, that's a fact. I don't know. It just oh. bothered me because well, the thing I was reading was saying that uh, what we need to start looking at is the state income tax on the people because if the people would get taxed directly in an income state income tax, then we'll be more apt to watch for our state money goes and we'll scream a little bit more and blah, 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 which I think is a total false argument because we all get taxed by the federal government and we don't have a say in what goes on there. 
And we can scream and yell all we want, but it's, they just uh, spend whatever they want anyways. No, that was okay, the argument. Well, right, 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 right. If I'm, we tax the citizens of the state, then they'll be more apt to raise their voices on where the money goes. That's not true. See, Plus, they don't care. <laughs> see, they did that in Norway, and Norway is is that they they hold that up as a as an example. Like you see, when Norway started getting all of their oil money, they kept their income tax. They did keep their income tax. However, they also the state basically double dipped because the state took some off the top. And had the income tax. And so, I mean, that, that I never, ever advocate for a new tax. I always like... Ever, uh, because it's not going to replace anything. I like when people like to look at socialist countries and say, now that's how we ought to be right there. Let's hold them up to the candle. I, I mean, look at how great health care is working out in the UK. Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's the perfect example of, of where we're headed with our, our health care here in the country. And and as far as as this color is it is it red? Is that who this? That's red. On the, red. You, no. You're asking for this president to be impeached. Do you really, honest to God, think that the problem came from this president? I think about eighty percent has in the last uh, few years. We should have pulled out of Afghanistan and Kuwait and all that countries over there a long time ago. Yeah. We still got people in harm's way. You're absolutely right, right I'm, there. I'm not going to argue that we should have pulled out, but I mean, the, the the fact of the matter is that the president does not have the power or the authority to do these things that, that you think he's done. It's actually been the Congress that has done all these things. It has been the Congress that has advanced the health care. It has been the Congress that has kept our troops, that keep sending money and to keep our troops over there in, you know, with our foot on the the throat of uh, brown people in other countries. I'd definitely like to see Obama impeached, no doubt about it, along with every Along with every single, I mean, you, you want to talk about layoffs, about a 535 layoffs right off the top, right yeah. there, bam, get rid of every, <laughs> every last one of Let's those uh, congressmen and, and senators. Well, okay, how do, how, the how do you that do got it, pay right? raise. That's all of them. They all okay, can. I'll talk to you later. Then. All right, thanks, thanks. Red. Appreciate it. No, it's just funny. They all got a pay raise, and they're whining about the sequester. They got to lay off eight hundred thousand people or something in the defense, mm -hmm. which is a joke. But uh, and yet they all took a pay raise just a month ago. We talked about it. I'm sure they kicked and screamed and begged. No, no, to do it no, no. I they... can't. I can't. In good, honest. No, I can't take that money. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> No, my bank account can take it. Okay. I can't take it. Just my. What's that ad that you play where uh, Pelosi said something about most of my colleagues here are the still the breadwinners of their home? <laughs> it's like wow, breadwinners. I need the you, Paris. The, I need you to check the connection on the back of yeah, your I microphone. Was there, you're kind of cutting in and out, and uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, an equipment failure or if it's operator headspace. If you're Moving your head too too far away from the microphone. All right, we got you. All right, sweet. We're still getting some uh, interference from folks trying to uh, block the line. You know, it, to think that the danger out there. What is the danger of people talking about these issues, Josh? What is the danger that happens when people start to truly, honestly consider where things are going? Instead of just simply accepting what others tell them, I think the danger there's a. Ooh, now it's like booming. I think there's a danger to the state. The state doesn't like us to talk about. The state doesn't like people to think. Period. Just like the state of Alaska, fifty. Where is the justification for fifty billion dollars spent in the last six years? I mean, if that article is correct, the state of Alaska. Fifty billion now they're dip and they're they've dipped into their reserve funds. So, I mean that's a Republican controlled body, isn't it? Even the governor, the House, the Senate. Of course, I know that there was that gang of whatever they were in the Senate side there for a while, but they didn't. I don't know where's the fiscal conservatism. Or whatever they like to call it. It's just about $8 billion a year in spending total. I don't. I haven't heard anyone talk about that. That's because... Hang on, hang on. Hold on. 
Try that. Holy guacamole. There we go. There, there Aaron, Aaron Bennett back in the studio here. So, how I was trying to say there is that's because they get a pass because they're not uh, liberals. Just like I was listening to the show here, trying to get here, and somebody called in there and was talking about how we need to impeach Obama. And when you asked him why, he cited that we shouldn't be in Afghanistan as one of his reasons. We were there way before Obama, and he didn't put us there. No. But he hasn't pulled us out either. No, he hasn't pulled us out. I'm not saying that, um, I'm not trying to give him a pass. But how many people were beating their chest when the guy that put us, put us in there was in office? Everyone I knew. And now all those same people are screaming how we need to get him out. But it, the, the war didn't change. The ideology didn't change. The guy putting them there changed. So all of a sudden now we need to get them out? Actually, just the letter in front of their, their political party letter changed. Right. That's why, I mean, it's the same. You're sitting here talking about what's the deal here in the state? Well, R, L, L, M, N, O, P. What difference does it make? I, I, A, I, P. I spend all your money for free, whatever you want me. <laughs> I mean, come on. What do you want me to be? <laughs> I, if you look at it in terms of principle, I don't know a single politician who has principles. Well, I don't know a single time in history where when the use of force is allowed to take money, the people didn't become corrupt with that money. You can't look at any time in history where that's possible. Yeah, I think Hop is, Hop is a little deal. We always talk about democracy, the God that failed. The state of Alaska, the politicians in the state government are a prime, shining example of his whole theory behind democracy. Absolute corruption. Spend as fast as you can because you're only going to be here so long, baby. All right, it's a, it's a time preference issue. And they spend and spend. Of course, we're a big state, we say. We're a bunch of garbage. The only reason they're spending is because they got it. Yeah. Right? And you got absolutely. Spend. If they got cut, if they were only getting three billion They'd in that spend. same amount of time, they would spend the three billion. And I don't. Your, our infrastructure here would not be different. There's no way. It's not like it's that amazing anyway. And money goes to you know your local goon factory, anyways. You can see where money goes. When the state, the, when the money that the goon spend. factory. What are you talking? Are you talking about the the public employees union? Or? Those and where you have uh, you can see where the state money spent regionally. It's all where the votes are. Okay. And there's nothing nothing weird about that. I guess I don't know. It just bothered me. Fifty billion dollars, and I've not heard hardly. Well, not hardly. I haven't heard anyone complain about it on anything where they're saying that. Why is the state spending so much money? I absolutely no. They they complain all the time. They complain that they don't have enough money. Right. They they're constantly complaining that they don't have enough money. We need more money, and it's always for the children. Well, that's why I was saying that uh, they're talking about an income tax. I think that's that's coming. That's going to come when you have a government that wants to destroy their own bread and butter, which is the oil companies. And, of course, we're not supposed to feel sorry for them because they're rich and powerful and they're greedy and they only employ 90% of the state, but, uh, oops, and yeah, give us all the money. But the biggest giveaway ever is going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a giveaway. People are still calling it a giveaway. I saw it the other, heard someone the other day. How do you, how, the how biggest you giveaway, giveaway because ever. you're not you're not taking as much of your money. That's a giveaway, right? So it's so giveaway. so when you file your tax returns and you get money that's from the giveaway. IRS, that's a giveaway. Yeah, only if you don't pay. Well, if you go rob <laughs> someone on the street, right? That's a giveaway. And you take five bucks from them, and you feel sorry, and you give two back. It's like, <laughs> what are you mad at? I gave him two dollars. What are you talking about? That's because the people on the other side see it as theirs. Aha! How dare you have money in your pocket? That belongs to me. Yeah, just in case anyone that thinks that way is listening, you are a socialist. 
Is that what that is? That's the word? Yeah, that's a socialist. Are you sure? America's socialist. I don't see how Americans. anybody dices it up any other way. Yeah, Americans are socialists, absolutely. And Alaskans, I think, are even more so than most. Well, it's right in our Constitution. I mean, if you, <laughs> you, you read our Alaska State Constitution, it is one of the most socialist documents you'll ever find. It's fantastic. Of course, it has all the supposed Bill of Rights that they stand by and protect and defend, except for when they actually talk about protecting and defending them and their attorneys say, well, that's unconstitutional to protect and defend your citizens. No. Uh, I, I can't stand this state. I love living here. I love a lot of the people here, but the whole the political atmosphere here is really sucks. It really sucks. $2 billion giveaway. So let's just tax them into Bolivian, oblivion, and you know, one of the things I heard when I'm this oil argument thing was, well, over in other countries, and they're talking about, like, Saudi Arabia and all these, uh, their oil tax is way higher than ours. I'm like, well, there we go again. We're comparing us, or the state of Alaska, to totalitarian governments. Or, like, with Norway, socialist governments. And we're saying, well, look at how great they're doing. And you don't think if these guys weren't bringing in $10 billion a year... Instead of 50 over the last six years, let's say they brought in $100 billion over the last six years. I think they would sufficiently be able to spend that $100 billion. Just thinking that, but I'm sure they would. Any different? I don't see, I don't know, it's a waste of time. Guys, we're, yeah. So you're a socialist, people. <laughs> Quit being socialist. Do we have a socialist on the phone? Good morning, caller. Who's this? Oh, um, I didn't hear the beep-beep sound. There is no beep. Right? There's no beep-beep. Okay, well, this That's is Frank. Uh, uh, we had a little bit of an exchange last time I called. Who's uh, this again? I want you to understand that I agree with 8% of, of uh, libertarianism, but that's not why I really call. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. We're a common enemy. And uh, anyway, uh, they're after not just the money, let's say, from the oil companies. They're out to the nuclei of our society which is the family and the individual, the spirit that wish to crush the spirit of you all and build their sexless class with godless state. I'd like to read a short thing about the death of the word genocide. It's the systematic measures for the creation of a national, political, cultural, religious, or group. That is what... Obama and his lackeys and fellow travelers are doing both parties to come to the realization that they are masters of deceit. We're at war, and we have to, forces, whether it's the, the agnostic, not fiscal conservative, the libertarian, the right to bear arms, the right to life, and every other force we can come up with to fight these people, or we will lose. I don't necessarily disagree with everything that you said either, but I think where we part ways a little bit is the way to get to the end there. We don't, like originally, I think this discussion was revolving around um, gays getting marriage licenses, licenses and such, and our point is to remove the state from the equation, and I think a lot of these problems that we have i mean just like the people you're talking about obama and the administration of this or that so we look at it as an issue between individual individualism individual liberty property rights versus the state that's pretty much on this show that's how we view the entirety of everything the state well, versus us they're going to come at us with an axe and they'll chop at one they'll chop at the other they'll chop at another who is, who is there, though? No, he, that, just, he, he brought him up. But that's, that the, that's the core of the problem. There is us. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, if we don't join together, we will be destroyed. Not a time. And uh, maybe that's what could happen. Total financial ruin. Oh, that's and, definitely going to happen because of the spending habits and the monetary system. I mean, there's a whole litany of reasons why that's going to happen. They're... They've been lucky enough to 
speed it along only because the people have gone along with it and just let them do it to us. I mean, just like with the bailouts and all that kind of garbage, that was a complete ripoff. That was a grand theft never seen before in the entirety of history. The grand I, I theft. But yeah. what we're what we're trying to point out is it's it is a them versus us kind of a deal, but we like to focus a little bit more on who the them is. It's not a necessarily any particular party. It's not a particular social group. It's the state itself. Right, but it's the state that's pushing these agendas. His, his point really exemplifies that, though. This might be a little off the wall to your thinking. I'm not sure. But underneath all of this, to destroy the Jewish roots, is a demonic conspiracy. Right, um, but your whole agenda exemplifies the, the problem, though, because you want to use force to put your will across but are not willing to allow it to happen to yourself. But you do allow it to happen to yourself because you have to to sanction what you want to do. Well, look, I, I live a very simple life and have for probably half a century up here, and, and I'm about as independent as anybody in this entire state. Do, do you and, vote? Uh, I The remoteness, it's sometimes extremely difficult to, to vote absentee because it's at a time... When you can't get a plane in or out, the weather is foul. You the ice head. The way you the, built the system do you, do you vote though? Vote. Do you what? vote when you can? I do vote, you vote whenever I can. All right. So you aggressively participate in the use of force. In the, do I aggressively participate? No, you do. You do if you vote. What's voting? So, yeah. See, what we're trying to point out is that there's a different way to look at what's going on here, and the problems are going to be solved. I'll, I will agree with you that there's a. As on the religious side, there's definitely a spiritual battle. There's no doubt. That's what ultimately all battles are. But on the uh, on the other plane, the battle is also between a the state versus the people, and we think that there can be a change in people's in the the outlook, the way things are going on, and whatever, off a of simple off of a few different objects one is property rights one is individual liberty one is aggress against nobody by any means the you only time all you use, agreed to do the only time you are allowed to use force is in the defensive mechanism for protection but otherwise than that when you start to use See, we think that when you use politics as when you vote or whatever to get the right guy in or whatever, that's using force against your neighbor because you're saying, I want this guy to force the way I believe on someone else. And we don't think that's correct. Right. I, I don't think that Jesus... I don't think the Bible sanctions anywhere the use of force to force Jesus on everybody. Where does the Bible, where does the Bible sanction that? I wouldn't have put a boot on the ground in Iraq or Afghanistan if I had the power to stop it, for example. No, and that's no, that's good. I I think we, we understand where you're coming from, and I can actually understand your frustration because it's a huge... I'd have blown to, to the Stone Age. They were pretty close anyway. Okay, so <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so how, you, you, how would, easy you wouldn't have killed them up close. You would have just thrown a bomb at them and killed them from far away? I, I couldn't copy that. You said you you wouldn't have put a boot on the ground. I'd have hit the strategic military targets and let them stew in their juices. I want to know why God had His Son born a poor shepherd to a poor shepherd instead of born born Caesar Augustus. Well, you'd have no society at all other than I said like scattered wolf packs. Yes, that run around and use the voting system to eat each other. Absolutely, I agree with you. Well, I, I don't think we can have a society like that. And as I said, they're trying to destroy our traditions, the family, and the spirit of the individual. That's their objective. That's what the communists work to accomplish. You but kill that, the spirit of the individual. If you're going to bring the religious aspect into it, you have why to. didn't you can't okay? Deny then why God out of the world and you're nowhere? You're did, dead meat. Does God not know what He's doing? It, he obviously didn't because He didn't have Christ born Caesar Augustus. You look at things from such a the, perspective when it comes to religion, there's no opening in your mind for a valid discussion, nor is this uh, medium a way can, one can really get at it in a few minutes. 
No, I think that he has a valid point. You're you're saying that you want, in a way, your Christianity to be forced on people through the no, use of I, force. No, I that. I said... Uh, you said that you voted and you would know, use tactical weapons against... <laughs> well, they're brown, concept. Josh. It doesn't matter. You can, you can be an agnostic, but believe that these are our roots as a nation. No, we... On the good side. That's what we're talking... about. you the evil, then you are part of the evil. That's what we talk about every stinking Saturday. Individual liberty and the founding and the mindset behind individual liberty of this country. Got more to come after the Fox News right here on Local Talk Radio, KFAR. Uh, welcome back to Hour 1 of Patriots Land. We call it uh, the Saturday morning wake-up call. And uh, joining us here from the, well, basically it's the Brain Trust, the ones that, that started this. We've got the Bennett brothers from Far North Tactical, Aaron Bennett, and from Big Run Enterprises, Josh Bennett. Good morning, boys. Morning. Good morning. All right, where would you like to go from here? We, we, we've been discussing... Oh, well, my brain hurts. Well... Need aspirin. <laughs> now, that last caller... He needed to slow down a little bit. We, I, I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and listen. Isn't the point of what we talk about liberty? Well, I, individualism, I, individual freedom, and standing up for some people. The, you know, actually, most people that call in or that I talk to outside of the studio here will we'll talk about liberty in the same breath that they talk about using force on other people. They can't separate the two. And their neighbor. See, I, I think Using against their neighbor, even. Part of sure. the problem here, exactly. isn't it, that, that when people start thinking that somehow the real problem with our country is that people are allowed to make poor decisions, or allowed to sin, are allowed to do something that they or disagree with morally. Allowed to sag their pants. Uh, whatever it is. Whatever it allowed is to that stand on the sidewalk. <laughs> allowed to text while driving. Whoa. Uh, I, so much of this comes down to the fact that people, good moral people, want to impose their morals on other people. Well, Steve, Jesus didn't finish the job when he was here. He died too early, and then God took him away before he got to put the hammer down. I know. <laughs> it was redonkulous. <laughs> so, so mean, thinking about writing the fourth book of the go- or what, no, 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 the fifth book of the gospel is the way it should have ought to been you know like they put on youtube the way it ought to ended where jesus put the hammer down and people couldn't text among other things and they couldn't sag their pants yeah yeah that would be whew, burn or they couldn't smoke the the herb well, would have eventually i wonder if they've gone after the skinny jeans in florida yet you know, one of the I things is up. you can. You know, one of the things you could argue though for the other side is that if we didn't throw tons and tons of people into jail, how could we go? How could we go and uh, serve the people that are in jail, like Jesus said to do? He said to go to the jails and the prisons and talk to the prisoners, right? To minister to them. So if you look at it that way, put, the more people we put in jail, the more we can do what Jesus told us to do by going in and ministering to the people in jail. Yeah, maybe this is part of the unholy alliance here. I kind of like Josh's line of thinking. Uh, no, I know. I, I, Catholics have used that line of thinking for a long time. It worked out great. Well, you said it the Puritans. Oh. Hey, hey. I'm just saying. Hey. I think this is part of and the, the issue, Josh. You're, you're on to something. And I think we've talked about this before, that, that when Christians or any other religious group start trying to get the government to go out and do the work that they feel they're supposed to be doing, but they try to get the government to do it instead, that's where the where have been the biggest problems. You want to get down to the nitty-gritty, the rise of the state proper didn't happen until the Reformation. I think all that's covered in First Silas or something like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very, very apocryphal book. Did you right. Just write it? They haven't quite found it no, yet, no. but I know it's out there. Lost manuscript. Lost, 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 not written yet manuscript. There you go. But really, we're mocking that a little bit, but there's some truth to everything that we're mocking here. There's a little bit of truth to we're over stating what Christians overstate what Christ told them to do. They're trying to moralize people in areas that it's none of their business. And they're using the force of the state, which at the same time hates the very fact that they're religious. 
And you think that the people that you think the state loves your religion, folks? They think the state loves Jesus? I don't think so. The state will allow you well, to be a participant because you give them give the state you see the state so much of your power you see the state your individualism as long as they'll take care of the little naughties that you don't like that's about it chip but go ahead i mean you can't biblically i don't think there's the, not even i don't think biblically it's not there but historically it is the whole thing is born not, yeah, uh, historically, it's a, it's but a, even more so in the last in the nineteenth or twentieth century. The rise of the state comes from the Protestant movement. So to ask uh, trying, trying to, to, ask, mind around that to ask Christians to remove themselves from it I mean, is almost the, an oxymoron. There isn't part of the problem though the Roman problem going back to the Roman Empire, and that wasn't that wasn't founded on on Christian anything. I well, mean, we have a Roman type government. Well, Ro sure. Rome was the ult was an ultimate state, sure, because they were the ultimate ar arbitrator of law, and they had a territorial monopoly on that. But if you're going to look in more classical times to look at where, you know, where our roots are, our roots don't lie in the Roman Empire. They they came out of uh, feudalism and out of the age of Catholicism, the Dark Ages, and you have the the Middle Ages going into the Reformation. And the Reformation was born of the Protestant movement, which ultimately led to the rise of the state. Uh, there, you can't show um, any king from the fall of the Roman Empire to the time of the Reformation as having state power. There was no state kings. Right, kings and, and, could not make law. They had to follow the law. Right, in and essence, they didn't the have law. a territorial monopoly on the arbitration of law. Now we can make law. The kings in power can make law, create thin air. And, not only that, they can excuse themselves from following the law, exempt themselves from that same law that they make, which in kingly times could never happen. The king was never above the law. The people uh, would uh, hold his feet. they burn his castle down, baby. Who do you think you are? You're not above the law. You know, what's interesting is um, during the Reformation when they were, obviously there was w widespread war going on with all the princes, either Christian princes or um, Catholic princes. And as the, ref uh, the Protestants begin to win, you see these territorial monopolies being set up and one of the first requirements of um, state state kings princes that became state kings most people don't realize that places like germany germany had over 300 different separate um, states inside of itself fiefdoms and so on and those would all get swallowed up during the reformation by singular uh, territorial monopolies and one of the first requirements was that all of the other fiefdoms were to raise their defenses to the ground because they needed to have the monopoly on the protection. Germany actually was in quite a few of those all the way up to World War One, weren't they? Germany didn't become didn't, a singular territory for until after World War One. Right, they didn't but I mean, they had a lot of all their castles. Yeah, right, that's part of the problem. You know, did you hear about the guy in? Right, I'm just. England? My point is, is that once you had the entity of the state rise to power, one of the first requirements was to make any um, surrounding fiefdom raise their defenses to the ground. They were allowed to still keep uh, armies. Be for their servitude to the state, but they weren't allowed to have defenses for themselves. We, I mean, that never ends. They look at every country in the world, and they spend how much of their energy trying to disarm their people. That began America. That began as soon as the rise of the state happened. We went from state militias and county militias and city militias and borough militias, municipalities and assemblies to federal. Troops. Right. When you're a tax-funded protection agency, it doesn't do you any benefit of any kind to have an armed um, entity that you're protecting. Because they might defend themselves from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's take some phone calls. All right. Let's see if they still Man, have anybody actually on the line. That. All right, we've managed to clear all the lines there. Okay, well, we'll we continue the... on with my point then. Nah, no, um, go ahead, that's all. 
obviously that kind of system, the system we have today, and the system that was born out of the Reformation, couldn't possibly exist without, <coughs> without at the bare minimum, tacit radio, support. Yeah. All right, we got somebody now. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi. Hey, who is this? Hey, this is Cricket. Hi. Cricket, go ahead. What's on your mind? Well, might makes right. If you want, uh, you know, to stop paying property taxes, the only thing a person can do is unite. You have to be down there by the hundreds and say you want your property rights back. You don't want to be paying those property taxes. Right well, now, we're conquered and divide. And if people don't, you know, join together and show a a power that we're not going to do these things, that's the only way it's going to stop a lot of this. You can't just sit in your own home today and just say, well, I don't want to pay taxes. You have to unite. Take 350 people down there and, and camp down there at the borough that you don't want to do it anymore. I mean, what would be your suggestion of not paying property taxes if you wanted your property uh, if you want to own your property straight out, what would you do? I think it would take about 10,000 people. Well, 10,000 even sounds better. Well, e even then, Cricket, you got to understand that if we did that here, if we had a tax rebellion at the borough level, the state would crack down because the, the whole issue is that the, the property taxes is a state issue, and the borough was foisted upon the people that lived here by decree of the state. So, I mean, at some point, you got to understand that if you're going to stand up and, and rise up with a tax rebellion, you're going to have to be willing to actually get your gun out. Well, and I'm not going to be a part of any stinking tax rebellion with a bunch of people who still see the legitimacy of the state in the first place. Yeah, I mean, either. So they're going to stand around and say, I'm not paying my property taxes, but I still see the need to have a borough, a state government, the well, federal we, government, the, the right, police, the We just the need the right blah. people in office. We, right. need, we need to elect a good man to lead us. Right. I mean, that's all well and good, but the underlying current has to be the ultimate depletion and end of the borough itself no government and why why get together with a bunch of people that on one hand they say yeah i want to i don't want to pay my property taxes basically out of which i can support that mm -hmm. it's garbage but those same people that are going to stand down there and can't wait till the next election to come around so they can vote their new whatever officer in. until people can see the illegitimacy of the state at their core it ain't going to happen and, and maybe maybe you can explain this to me, Josh. What is the difference between people who look for the state to pass a law to make something like abortion illegal versus those who go out and look for the passage of a, a, a or a Supreme Court ruling to make abortion legal? What's the difference between the two of them? None. The difference there is a difference when we see because the way that we've been educated in public schools, we see when the state passes a law automatically that theory or that line of reasoning becomes legitimate. So before the state said that we couldn't tax or text, then it was legitimate that you would think, I can text and I can drive. But once they said that's against the law, people automatically say, you know, that's, that's, a, that's against the law. That's not legitimate. You cannot text while you're driving. That's, oh, it's in their psyche. Whatever the state says, it becomes legitimate. So... It comes down to if the state decided that yellow people, or let's not use any real person, purple people should be put to death, people's mentality is, well, the state said they must, they so. Must have done yeah, they at, must have at, done something good. Is at bare right? minimum, they have at least tacit support. Yeah. Everybody at least gives that. I mean, even, even I do. Well, even, Without even meaning to. Even people that want to... Is Cricket still on? Hang on. Suggestion, you just continue on. If you can't unite, then what? You, what is your suggestion to solve the problem? Then what would you want to replace the property tax with? Absolutely nothing. You own your your land. You don't pay any taxes with it. Right, but you what, own land, you what own tax land. would you support? So what would be your suggestion? Just sitting around like a what, dead dog and What do tax would you support? What? What tax would you support then? I wouldn't uh, support any taxes right now. Right now. Or ever. Okay. So you support the uh, end of the borough government completely? Yes. State government? Yes. Okay. Well, then we're getting along on the same page here. Well, yes, <laughs> what I'm talking about. So what do you suggest? You have to unite 
and let these people know we're, we're not going to put up with it anymore. That's why we come on the radio for the last two years every Saturday is to get people to unite. But what I'm telling you is that that's not going to happen if people don't understand the core of the problem. People don't understand it. They say that property taxes is the problem. No, it's not. It's the state entity that's the problem. It's the borough government saying that they have the right to tax anyone for any reason in the first place. You might get 350 people down there and 349 of them are going to say, yeah, well, what are, what are we going to, how are we going to support the, you know, we got to do something to support the borough government. Right, I don't They'll argue point. what kind of tax they're going to have. They're going to argue about this or that or what leader or what this. So we need to vote in the right guy and blah, blah, blah until people understand it's illegitimate at the core. The whole system is illegitimate. It's not going to happen. Exactly. All right, Cricket. Thanks for the yeah, call. Thank you. You have to you have to look at the the two entities that exemplify the ultimate state, and that would be the French and Americans. And if you look all through history from the fall of the Roman Empire, you don't see anything like what happened in France or in America. And for the first time in the French, uh, or after the French Revolution and the rise of Napoleon, you see the, for the very first time a successful draft and the, raise, the raising of a million-man army. They had to have how many countries come together to stand against them. And they attribute that to the fact that they had a free-entry government. So no longer was the affairs of the king or the emperor or the, the head of state his, his affair alone, or whatever he could raise to make it his affair, it was equally the affair of everyone because they all had an opportunity to be a part of government. So the, for the very first time, a draft was ex widely accepted because each man felt like he was part of that. It's the same mentality that spills over into us going down and trying to stop uh, a, a borough tax. We still have that tacit support. You see, the next war in history is done by another super state, which would be America, and that would be our Civil War, which happened right after the French Great Impressive War, and we instituted a draft on both sides that was widely accepted because of participatory government, the use of force on each other. Everyone gave tacit support. The same thing in Nazi Germany. It's the tacit support of the state that makes the state possible. You can't go down and, like Josh was making the example there, you can't just go down and say, oh, we're going to stand up against this tax. The tacit support of government in the first place is the problem. That's why all Germans are to blame for the, the death camps and for all of the atrocities that happened there. America, the French War and the American War had lost a life on a scale that hadn't been seen even in the time of the Romans, ever. 600,000 Americans dead? Nothing like that had ever happened before. Seven. So You're talking about the Civil War, right? Yes, I'm talking about pure combat, not ones that died in prison camps right. and things of that nature. In actual combat, the number is around 600,000 people with an army raised on both sides that had never, ever before been seen in history. And it was done through a draft, and a draft had never been successful before in history because there, there is no participatory government. The, the things, the heads of state were seen as a foreign entity and uh, seen with suspicion instead of as something that everyone could be a part of. And it is that use of force on each other that gives the legitimacy and the sanction to the state for it to do the thing it's, things that it does. It's the Uncle Sam mentality. Sure. He's your uncle. He wants you. Well, are you going to turn down your uncle? <laughs> but yeah. you, you, can't, you can't take a singular issue. My uncle's a crazy drunk, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, you can't take a singular we issue the because uncle? the same people that don't want to be taxed on their property want to stop people from wearing skinny jeans. Yeah. And it's the, the, like the very first caller there, that's the part that he's missing. He, he gives his tacit support. He actually gives active support in the form of um, force and voting to make it go his way or whatever way, at least closely, I mean, slightly supports his agenda. 
So it, it, it make sure that I'm, I'm fully, because I'm, I'm still, it's been, what, 97 years, it feels like that I've been wrestling with this stuff with you guys, but it's only been two. Uh, <laughs> but it just, it seems like it's, oh, wow, it, it, it blows my mind. Aaron, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm getting you correct on this, basically, that if you feel that the problem with America is people being homosexual, and that the way to solve that problem is to go and vote to make sure that they cannot get married. Or any singular issue. You could make it anything. Then basically I am the problem, not, not the homosexual. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm getting that. And, and, and whether it's abortion and that or... Doesn't that doesn't necessitate promotion or agreeing with the lifestyle right. it doesn't necessitate promotion or agreeing with abortion i mean if there's any singular issue in my mind to take up and who would you kill i don't know i mean abortion is the most disgusting thing i can think of i hate it i hate abortion like nobody's business but i don't see the state as a solution to the problem i see the state as the problem absolutely the state when they justified abortion became or when they took the money from me to yeah. make sure it happens so, yeah when they steal from you to send to china to help them abort yeah that's a problem well right and now taxes. right now they steal money from us and to pay for poor women right here in the state of alaska to go get to right kill their children and then with the uh it's just like with taxes do we like taxes we hate them i don't think there's anyone that hates them more than me I hate taxes. I hate the theft, the redistribution of my labor that I work for. Well, you live great and high on the hog. Yeah, well, I worked for it. And what gives you the right to take it from me? I hate tax. I hate the fact that I hate property taxes almost more than anything because the fact that my land, what I worked for, what I want to give to my children can be taken from me and my kids at any whim. I mean, they can arbitrarily decide that property tax is 100% next, next which, year. Which is only, could only ever happen in a participatory government. Which, no yeah. one can argue historically that participatory government has seen the highest tax rates. In fact, Napoleon wouldn't have been able to fund a million-man army and field a million-man army if he was not in part of a participatory government where everybody had a say because everybody paid their fair share. All right, I was Same listening. thing with the Civil War. The was, Civil War funded the biggest it, biggest mm -hmm. industrial revolution of armament ever seen in history. And that would never have happened and never been possible and the, the loss of life would have never been possible without without this tax funded agency that people were felt like because they were participatory and they at least gave their at the bare minimum tax of support they were able to be taxed at a rate never seen france and america had were being taxed and still are well all states are now but at that time at a rate that the world would never have ever put up with and could have never even imagined would be possible yeah we've talked about in the early colonial days when they raised the uh tax on properties and they didn't even own the property there was the rental the fuel the lords owned the property or whatever the land barons the landowners that the king granted the property to they would go from a few pennies per hundred acres or a few pennies per acre or whatever to where one time they said well you know you're gonna have to pay a dollar for every hundred acres that you labor on our land a dollar which I think we've figured out that in this borough, someone that owned 40 acres of prime land with a home on it and everything would equate to about $400. Maybe, no, it would, equate, it would equate to $40 in today's money. And they got their pitchforks and ran the dude, the guys off. It happened over and over and over. But we've gotten to the point... But within, in the, within the first 10 years of it becoming participatory government, they were paying 10 times that amount. Right. And they, and they accepted it because they had this mentality of, well, I voted for it. Right. I lost the vote. Oh, well. And then Maybe the, next time. Hans Hoppe has a great, <laughs> has a great uh, lecture where he talks about just that, where he shows kingdoms versus democracies, and in every instance, in taxes, inflation, warfare, on and on and on and on, the democracies they, are they by far and away... Exist. Yeah, those things didn't even exist. But we're free now. I feel free. 
until we understand ever been me. the core of that and the illegitimacy of that going down over here and telling them we're not going to pay our property which is all well and good i mean i encourage people to go tell people if they don't want to pay their property taxes but the right. problem that we see until the the hearts and minds change that's you're going to go that's it tell them you don't want property taxes then you go vote for someone to tax you somewhere else it has to be a total shift. It's not just enough to say I'm not going to pay the tax. It's I'm not going to participate anymore. Right. I'm I'm not going to go out there and give you legitimacy. Right. But if you're not going to vote, then what are you going to do? You're not affecting any change. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to get that's, Republicans that's down the in the core, state house? That's, so we can that's the core of the issue. The but, voting is the problem. Well, and and we've been it, it's been drilled into our heads through twelve years of public education that the only way to make a change is through participating in the system. The only way to change things is by voting. That's not true. That is inherently a straw man argument. I didn't buy into that until just this last year. And, oh, my goodness, the way my mom's head exploded when I told her that I did not vote. Oh, I get accosted all the time, Steve. I really do. It seems like everywhere I go, somebody that listens to the show will lambast me on the voting. People are still caught up like crazy on the voting issue. Well, yeah, because if we didn't vote in those great Republicans down in the state house, state legislature, we probably would have spent, instead of $50 billion in the last six years, it'd probably be like $90 billion. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Let's give the Democrats a chance. See how much they can spend in six years. Yeah, well, then we could complain about how we wanted to go back to the way it was in the good old days when we didn't spend that much and we had Republicans. <laughs> well, that's true. It would be less, even though it would still be too much. But it's like sequ sequ like the sequester. <laughs> sequ sequ sequestration. Sequ Why did, do they have to use did, such did a you, stupid did you hear word? The, did you hear the show on Wednesday when Natalie Howard and I looked up that word? Mm, no. One of the main definitions has to do with seizing enemy property. That's how your government thinks about you, Josh. Oh, I know that. They are going to seize enemy property. I, we are all enemies of the state. Just ask Napolitano. You know, it's. I think it's high time to read um, Boti again on there. <laughs> Double Boti. Whatever. That guy's excellent. Boati, actually, I think. Uh, yeah, we should. His I don't got it with me right now. Well... All right, we've got uh, less than a minute until the Fox News at the top. Then let's of the give someone less than a minute to talk. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Just Winston. Winston, you got oh, like dang it. thirty seconds. Go fast. Uh, we'll hold uh, you over. Yeah, it's uh, 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 the, the, these paradox. Uh, uh, and and the paradox is is that in order to to defeat the government, we've got to form a government. Yeah. Uh, 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 and and it'll never work. We're we're still tribal. I'll try to call back in next hour. Or you can just hang on if you want. If you want to hold on the line. My cell phone battery is okay. Yeah. All right, you got it on KFAR. Thanks. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio, but we are streaming live at kfar 660com and we are available on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine, the man with the face made for radio. Joining me in the studio, we have Josh Bennett and Aaron Bennett. They are the brain trust who came up with the idea of coming on the radio. And instead of talking about politics in the sense of who should we vote for or what are those crafty sly devils doing to us now, <laughs> that we would start instead talking about some deeper philosophical issues. And it has... Uh, you know, over the process here that we've been going through, you've made a number of converts. Been a total failure. I actually no, you you have you have been you you have made a number of converts. I was actually talking to somebody here uh, Thursday night, uh, who told me that his wife now is an avid listener. Every Saturday morning, she she gets up, turns on the radio, and is just absolutely engrossed by what we have to say, and is enthused about the way in which you guys say it. In mm -hmm. terms of saying that that we need to move away from government, you just had a great text from somebody. Did you want to read that about the, the goal? Maybe a better word's appalled. Yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> they call <laughs> Jim no, too. Enthralled. She call in Jim hotline. Yeah, Jim sent an email. He says no. 
don't form a government to defeat a government. The key is to become ungovernable on the margins, then to expand the margins. And like to become ungovernable. Is, wasn't that one of the main complaints against the original colonists? These people are ungovernable. Mm hmm Yeah, they would uh, point out that <laughs> no, they're ungovernable, they don't fight fair, they don't go home when they're supposed to, they keep shooting at us, what's the problem? <laughs> they don't pay their taxes like they're supposed to. They think it's bad when we charge them 100% tax on their molasses so they can make rum. That is why we had a war right there. I... I would go to war. You start messing with people's rum, you're done. You know, I never advocate violence, but if we're going to mess with rum, I might just change my mind. Yeah. Don't touch it. All right. Let's do this. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Oh, they didn't hold. What? Hotline tried to get through. All right. Do you well, want that to sucks. Yeah. That's all right. We'll, we'll get him back. There's and just for the record, I think Winston was going to... I mean, he was making the point that... Not that we should form a government. To That's the mentality that, right. that we That's should have mentality. one leader to blah, blah, blah. You know, in a success, successful revolution, there do need to be leaders of some sort. Not necessarily to charge the battle, but there has to be intellectual leaders to push the... the um, push the envelope on the intellectual side. We saw that with... Um, Ron Powell. Ron Paul. Excellent example in today's media. In today's... In the now. Ron Paul is that person to push the envelope. And without that in the American Revolution, it wouldn't have happened. Without the Paines and the Jeffersons and the Patrick Henrys, there were, there were literal, literally combat in the market of ideas there was combat with pamphlets you had one side making pamphlets saying that we had to obey the king and god save him and all you rebel scum scoundrel darth vader type things and then you had the other side the liberty-minded folks who were drawing up pamphlets and starting newspapers and writing things because they knew that the war was with the mind. It was with public opinion. Once you have public opinion to take away the legitimacy of the state, the state falls like the walls of Jericho crumble. All right. You going to try the pot line again here? All right. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi. Sorry Sorry about that. I was trying to sync up with what you were saying with what I was hearing. And, um, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Jim and Kenai. Jim and hey, Kenai. Thanks Jim. for calling in. Um, speaking about leaders, I think the mistake George Washington made, and I know this is kind of walking on almost hallowed ground, but he, he took the leadership position after the Revolutionary War, and I think that was a mistake. If you look back at the judges, after they led Israel to victory, they went back to their farms, and then the Jews said, hey, we want you to be king. They said, no, God is king. I've, I'm going to be productive on my little vineyard here and sit under my fig tree, and whatever. And George Washington provided the impetus, he provided the, the social status for the federal government. And if he hadn't done that, there wouldn't have been that centralizing there wouldn't have been that centralizing act after the Revolutionary War. Yeah, the Federalists would have been they would the Federalists would have been done. I right. think. Yeah, it's too bad. Also when you look at Washington, you see that same mentality when he was the uh commander-in-chief of the for armed forces for the colonists because he took what was I think Rothbard calls a libertarian force of arms where, where these people were individualist fighting you know they came and went as they pleased they were fighting when they felt like it how they felt like it they didn't go marching to the beat of the drum they didn't line up and shoot at the British they hid behind logs they sniped them they did whatever they could because they fought on their terms because they were free and then when we had Washington become the general he wanted prescription of people he wanted you to volunteer and then stay then he would have this structure of organization and he made a march and train to be a proper army which took away a lot of the individualism, I think, of the of the soldiers that were fighting the war in the first place. And this isn't really to denigrate his 
his character. He was working under what he understood. He was right. he was a good man. He was just mistaken about the best way of accomplishing the goals. One of the greatest quotes that I've ever read about George Washington was from King George himself when he found out when news traveled to England that after the war that uh, Washington turned his sword in to Congress and said, I'm done. Because you have to remember, in those days, not you, but in most people, have to remember, in those days, the conquering general became known as emperor, lord, whatever. When you, the conquering general of the army, he was the new ruler. That was up until then. And then this George Washington fellow defeated the British and turned his sword in and said, I'm going back to Vermont, thanks, or Virginia, whatever, Mount Vernon. I'm going back to Virginia, it's been fun talk to you later and the greatest quote of, the, of mine at least for George Washington was that when King George upon hearing this said surely no how's it go by God surely this man Washington is the greatest fellow to ever live and he just he was lured he was lured by Hamilton and the Federalists back into back into the uh, back into that centralizing force I think the problem with revolutions is that war is the health of the state and revolutions are wars. Yeah. And there's nothing as centralizing as a revolution because the new government has to attain control, and that's a centralizing thing. That means it has to create it has to create power structures to support itself. And that's why my opinion is is that the best way to actually attain liberty is what you read, which is to to uh, become ungovernable on the margins and then push the margins. Because once you once you cr- once you start creating that centralized place you create a target to attack right i think that's exactly where winston was going to go with that yeah yeah but that's that's a good point with uh, washington and hamilton is this if we look at that wasn't one of the reasons hamilton wanted the centralized government was to tax and pay off the debts of the people that were giving the money for the central army yeah i mean before the guy came to fight he brought his own knapsack and lunch that his mom, his uh, wife or mother made him. He went, shot a few rounds off, ran back home, did the chores, got some more food, ran back, shot a few more British. And then we see with the centralization of that army, now you have debts. Then we, that brought about uh, the currencies, the the crap currency. <laughs> and, and it brought about the speculators buying up the debt who are then pushing for the government to assume the debt to tax people in order to pay back the debt. Right. One of the first things Hamilton did was to get the federal government to buy the debts and right off the bat, right off the bat, the federal government's in debt. Right. But it's, it's the... Um, All from centralization of power. It's because of the free entry government allowed anyone to cover their neighbor. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so greed became something that was no longer um, a moral issue because it was justified through tacit support of the government that was because of particip- uh, free entry and participatory government. Absolutely. The great thing back then was that you still had, you know, that you didn't have the internet or telephones or anything, so you basically, the colonists who fought this war could go home and live his own life without any thought what was going on with this federal government nor did he care i mean for the most part they just went back to farming making their rum off a of cheap molasses <laughs> and what not what have you get but down with that basically you know they didn't have this they didn't have the support to where we have today where we think we have to participate constantly where it's a daily barrage where it just separates us as a in as people and takes away our individualism where these people could just they literally didn't care the well, average but, person didn't even know there was a president of the united States. but the one of the reasons they didn't care josh it's still part of the problem they didn't care because they had a free entry government and if if it's as laid back as you say it is they wouldn't you wouldn't have had war on the scale that you saw in the civil war it wouldn't have been possible things changed big time by then i'm talking about right after the revolution well thanks guys we'll talk to you later <laughs> thanks Thank for you, your Jim. points that was good four five eight talk is the number you want to go to another call sure all right Good morning, Mr. Patriots, the men. I'm getting a philosophical <laughs> debate right here on the radio. I was going to say something, but I'll are just you, let it go so you, we can have a show. Are you still there, Colin? 
Say something and we move on. Hello. Hey, go ahead. Who is this? Ted. Ted, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't have a problem. I'm, I'm told I'm free, and a uh, uh, preacher says I'm saved, so I guess all is well. <laughs> but uh, I don't have to do anything. I, I don't know, you know. Jeez, uh, pretty soon, you know, we wake up one night, and we're then going to be classified as a criminal, and criminals do what they want without impunity, so I guess then I'll finally be free. Wow. But, uh, That's a really interesting point. You know, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see any, any way that this country started off on bad footing, like after the Civil War, to pay for the debt also, we started our westward, I guess, imperial expansion. I mean, yeah. this country has never kept a single treaty with, with the Indians, and I don't know why we should feel we'll be treated any, any different. I mean... We've been lied to in every single war, uh, and until people realize that, you know, they got to figure out for themselves what freedom is and not let people tell them, so they realize there is a problem, we're not, we're not going to get anything done. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Aaron had this bumper sticker forever that said, you probably know it better, Aaron was uh, something about being... He is not more enslaved than the one who thinks he is free? Goth. Nobody is more impossibly enslaved than he that falsely thinks he's free. Right. Yeah, yeah. If, if, I've never been robbed at gunpoint or, or even strong-armed in my life. I've been ripped off a couple of times, but, man, I was pissed. But yet these people, every, every day, you know, we just pay our taxes, pay our taxes. I, I so, disagree that you've never been robbed at gunpoint. Well... <laughs> Yeah, but my, you know, well, my my point is, is that you know, when when government just takes and takes and takes, and where's the where's the sense of outrage? Well, what happens if you don't pay them? Uh -huh. Well, that? yeah, well, that, there just... you go. I mean, it's it's under threat of gun. Yeah, yeah, it sure it certainly is. And uh, yeah, well, there are other ways. I uh, of that we had tariffs. Uh, uh, we could get breaks like uh, Canada, I guess, used to do this. I don't know if they still do. If you improve your property, they, they, your taxes go down, which stimulates the economy. Right, we do it the other way around. We actually talked about that when we ran for borough a few years back where we thought that, that would be a good idea and we were ridiculed for it. Like how the borough ceased to exist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like my, my brother Nathan doesn't have any siding on his house and he really wants to cite it, but... Um, he put blue form or blue foam board up to prep it for siding to have this obviously enhanced R value, and his property tax went down five hundred dollars because he'd put this blue board up because it's not as pretty. Because it's not as pretty, so three years later he still hasn't put the siding on. You know, you made a good point when you said, "Where's the outrage for the taxes?" We're exactly the opposite. You hear people all the time saying, "Well." Taxes in America are the lowest they've ever been in the world, and look at the rest of the world. They're paying blah, 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 and you're griping because yours is 40%? No. The, out, the outrage is that well, we're outraged that other people are not paying their fair share. We right. shouldn't be measured by other people's yardsticks either. I exactly. Mean, we're, we're our own supposedly free country. Whatever happened to the idea of mind your own business? There you go. Well, when you measure, when we allow people to measure us with like you just said with other countries we're talking about socialist communist countries fascist countries so we want to be measured up with them why do we want i mean i thought we were the greatest country in the world and why do we care about what other countries are like well we were but we're i don't, I don't think we are now well i don't i don't know i'm told that we are so i guess we must be i don't i would say that we're not <laughs> yeah we have the potential to be uh, yeah, the people in America have the potential to be a great people, but as long as we want to steal from our neighbor, as long as we want to be an empire around the world ah, and force ourselves, yeah. force our democracy on every other country in the world, which boggles my mind, that is so far away from the foundings of this country where all, like, just say the founding fathers of the country, all of them said, mind your own business. Yeah. Don't go into other foreign countries. That was, I think it was Washington himself said, um, the difference between, between us and them is they have wars and we don't care. They fight each other, we trade. Our, our government supposedly derives, we are the sovereign, the ultimate sovereign, and, and the states derive their power from us and the government is subservient to the state. Yeah. Well, state uh, maybe, before the government maybe on paper, 
But if you look at it realistically right now, if they in Washington, D.C. pass a law, it trickles the other way now. We all have to do what they say or we find ourselves in a cage. We have a national government, not a federal government. Yeah, the sovereignty has been ceded, definitely. I mean, basically, if it hasn't been ceded, if we're saying that we still are, then we're definitely living under tyranny. We have to withdraw our consent to be governed. Exactly. Uh Aha! Color of the day, right there. Color of the day. Color of the day. Bravo. Thank you very much for calling in. 458-TALK is the number. Anything before we go on another call? I wanted to make another quote by Goth since we already did one. He said, uh, ignorant men raise questions that wise men answered a thousand years ago. I think that we see that on this show every day, every time we have a show. Well, we could say at least 600 years ago. Right. All these questions that we're raising have been answered time and time and time. Yeah, we're not bringing up anything new. Uh, but we're why, just trying to why remind are people we, of the past. Why are we, and I, I use the air quotes, the we. I mean, why is our country so ignorant now? It's because of free entry government. Because of a lot of things. It's not just that. It's, I, think I mean, there's no education anymore. Well, parents, parents, have seated, parents have ceded their, their responsibility of education to the state. Because I mean, people, when, no, <laughs> what do you think they're going to teach you? <laughs> people will only hear. People will only hear what they understand, and that's part of the problem. Thus, this show. Right. We would wish you to so understand differently. For pe- people to even be able to hear what we're saying, it takes two years or however long. I mean, you've been coming on the show with us forever, and it took you forever to understand what we're saying, and. Once you did, you started to hear what we were saying. And then it was just like, oh, snap, that's a no-brainer. See, when I, when I finally got it, and I made that decision to not vote, wow, that, that started a snowball in my, in my life. Right, because you're, when, now you're hearing I took, what you understand. When I took action on, on what I understood. That, it was the same with me with war forever, just because I've always hated the state since I was 14. Literally have hated it. And... But there's always the military thing that just kind of tugged at me. I had friends in the military, and it's like, oh, well, am I going to be un-American? And, you know, well, we fought a revolution. Those guys were unpatriotic. But it was until I realized, even though I'd read it, I'd read what Madison said about how our freedoms are taken under the guise of foreign enemies. It didn't internalize it until one day I decided, I realized from reading and talking with other people, the state's power comes from foreign wars. That's when I went, boing. We Even were, though I believed listening to people talk about the uh, the uh, military-industrial complex, I believed it absolutely. Like, that's right. You got those dirty rats. But at the same time, I had a hard time getting letting go of this military thing. And it was until I really internalized the state grows every time there's a war. 13 years ago, in the year 2000, would anyone have ever imagined that legislation like the Patriot Act no. would have been possible? And just a year later, we had it. Would anyone have imagined that indefinite detention would have been a possibility? Right, eight, eight years ago, I was all for getting the brown people. And six years ago, I was arguing with Josh about getting brown people. I mean, he was all for getting brown people, and I wasn't. It's, we weren't born this way. There is the, uh, could you imagine there being a conversation two years ago about drones flying in our sky? No. And they're seriously talking about it now well, what's for the, surveillance. Well, doing and, it. and they say, well, we promise that there won't be any armed drones flying around. <laughs> Just like however many promises they've made for the last 200 years. I mean, governments only make promises with the original intent to break them. They just do, they, they actually make promises, I think, so they can break them. Like, hey, what's on the agenda today? Well, we've got a couple promises to break. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, uh, maybe, and I, I wonder if sometimes they just go back through old treaties to see if there's any that haven't been broken. <laughs> oh, dang it. We, have, we haven't invaded Mexico for a while, guys. I hear, hey, Michelle, get that constitution out here. Bring it over. Let's see here. Oh, I haven't broke that law yet. <laughs> Article what? Let's break that one. The problem isn't the specific man, though. I mean, no, like absolutely it, not. But people, uh, for some reason, when you don't like in the past, when we were against 
Mitsters getting voted in, that automatically meant that we were for Obama getting voted in, which is a fallacy. We don't like Obama at all. I think he's a flat communist. Absolutely communist. I think he wants to have the American people subject to the state. But that didn't mean that I liked Mitt Romney, who was there no different. Doesn't mean I liked George W. Bush, who gave us the Patriot Act, who gave us the foreign wars, who spit on the Constitution, who spit on everything that was well and good in America. And he was given a tacit support, and he was given it, it wasn't support just of the... He was given vocal support right, from, you know. <laughs> the evangelical Christians of the nation because he said, I love Jesus, I go to church, I read my Bible. And I kill brown people, and I pass laws that are going to throw you in jail, and I give the birdie to people on TV, and but I'm a Christian. And it's just a joke. And until people take away that consent that this guy was talking about, the last caller, was great, great, great understanding that he has. It's absolutely right. Take that consent away. It crumbles. When people say, what do you want to do? take away your consent that's what we want to see because it crumbles that's the whole point the time behind Etienne de la Boatai Boati was the support of the people for the state is what keeps the state's walls up it goes away it crumbles absolutely because the state can do nothing without your support we're coming up on the Fox News here at the bottom of the hour if you'd like to be a part of the program you can uh well, actually, all four lines are on hold. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to go back to the phones anytime soon. But, hey, keep trying. You can also listen online at KFAR660.com and on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, 660 on your AM dial. This video with us, as always, Josh Bennett. Hey, Josh, where did Aaron go to Dion? I think he's this in the... Went out to, to see a man about a horse, so to speak. All right. All right. We've got all four lines on hold. That doesn't necessarily mean that anyone is on any of those lines, as we have. Nor does some... it mean we will answer them. No, exactly. <laughs> so if you're on hold, be patient. We may or we may not get to the phones. Lou Rockwell summarized Loboetti's political philosophy as follows. I'm just going to read a little from him. To him, this is Lou Rockwell writing about. Delabate. The great mystery of politics was the obedience to the rulers. Why in the world do people agree to be looted and otherwise oppressed by government overlords? It is not just for f out of fear. Boete explains in the discourse for voluntary servitude for our consent is required and that consent can be nonviolently withdrawn. That was from the Discourse on Voluntary Servitude. You can look it up. You can get it off of any... You can go to Mises, type in um, Voluntary Servitude, the Discourse on Voluntary Servitude, and then punch Mises right at it. You'll get the whole thing. And what's even better is that I think the one from Mises has an excerpt from Murray Rothbard talking about it, and it's actually almost better than Boetti's whole discourse. But anyways, strongly suggest reading it again and internalizing it. It's all about why do you give your consent to be robbed and looted? I mean, everyone that calls a show, everyone in the United States, I could probably say has a problem with the government in one way or the other. Unfortunately, some are because they don't get enough loot from them. But... Most people that don't like to be looted, don't like to be robbed, at the same time, they still give their support, tacit and explicit support, to that entity. Even though they don't like it, they still give them that support. And the whole object of it is, if you take away that consent, and people have mocked us for it, but it's proven. It's historical. Greater minds than I have said so. Once the support and the consent is withdrawn, and it can be done so voluntarily and non-violently, the walls crumble. It's over. The simple word, no, is probably the strongest word we can use. 
One of the things that Natalie Howard has said a number of times is friends don't let friends go to the borough <laughs> to ask them to do things. Right. Whether it's when you're doing that, you're asking them to do something. Whether it's asking them else. for money for for your favorite cause, or whether it's libraries, ask, or whether it's asking them to go and make your neighbors do something. Yeah, I mean that whole thing. This is one of the most violent organizations in this town. Is this borough borough government over here? They're literally violent. They impose violence against everyone in this borough because they say how you can or cannot treat your own property. And if you do, well, the point of the guns in the background, I strongly suggest people do whatever the heck they want with their property. I know I do. There is, you know, people say, well, what, do you, oh, what do you do? Well, I don't broadcast everything I do on the radio, come on. <laughs> but one of the things I do do is I do whatever the heck I want on my property. You, you do do on your property? I do do. <laughs> In fact, I have do do on my property. And I felt free to do so. My goodness. Too many do's. Oh, do. Oh, do. Double down on the... I double down uh, on the do sometimes. <laughs> Let's take some fun. You're such a child. 458-DOG is a number. Let's see who's there. Anybody? Good morning. Who's there? 39, theirs? but a child at heart. Are you still there? Hello? Hey, who is this? This is Tom. Tom, go ahead. What's on your mind? Oh, I'm just kind of feeling like it's, it's people like me that are making this country go downhill. Okay. What? You got to well, explain. Well, uh, you know, I was 19 and I was in jail. And, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, free money, free drugs, uh, the disability check, you know, get out of jail card and so i you know uh, but i never deserved the uh, you know disability and uh, and now it's like uh, w why should i go and work at carl's jr when i get the same amount on disability i mean uh, i'm not saying i'm right or anything but that's what people are you know why people don't want to work anymore no that's a know? really good point that the... and, and i'll tell you another thing they knocked on my door and he said, the good news is you get your disability check. The bad news is your brother murdered your dad last night. You know, what What sort of shit's that, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know, but we can't allow you to keep going with language like that on the radio. I'm sorry. That's a, one of those things where I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble with the state for uh, challenging their, their little rules in the FCC. No, we don't want to see any goons at our doorstep. All right. Should we take another call? Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston. Hey, thanks Winston. For thanks for calling back, man. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it, sometimes it gets kind of hard to get on back on the, on, on the radio. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, it, 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 I, I like your discussions, but it, what I'm getting at is when, when you do start taking calls, they fill up real quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um uh, uh, I, I think a lot of our problems goes to the fact that uh, uh, as as people, as human beings, we're uh, we're tribal. Uh, 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 we're we're built and bred to live in communities of uh, twenty people, and and we 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 transfer that to the whole state, uh, you know, to everybody, uh, uh, to the governments and stuff. Uh, uh, we're still tribal, but uh, the the state's not, <laughs> and uh, 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 there's uh, uh, a book I've been reading, and uh, and it had a quote in there, uh, a, a phrase in there called "collective effervescence," uh, uh, and people are constantly looking for this collective effervescence from the state, and they don't get it. Uh, 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 the 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 joy and the sense of belonging, you know, uh, 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 celebrating the kill, whatever, uh, uh, and and so we we constantly come up disillusioned and 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 things. Uh, we need to just, like I say, just get rid of the state. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, I love it when you call in for one. I appreciate uh, you're actually, you read to make 
to enrich your life and to be more intelligent. And one of the greatest things I like about you is that one of your fate, one of your heroes is mine also, and that is Patrick Henry. Amen. Amen. There's uh, I've been reading for way too long, and I know I mentioned before is conceived in liberty with Murray Rothbard, and reading Patrick Henry through that and the influence that he had over the, all the colonies. It, and, you know, he didn't pick up a gun and go shoot anyone, but his discourse, the things that he wrote, the, the speeches that he gave, that cemented the hearts and minds that we always talk about, and you've right. mentioned also that that's what cemented the revolution. That's what made the change. That was the people that that's when the consent left the consent to the king was gone and it was because of discourse and people talking and doing the pamphlets and patrick henry was one of the best and the revolution was won because yeah. of that it didn't have anything to do they still took up arms yeah i know that part but until the populace was behind withdrawing their consent from king george and that took a long time. You, you remember when uh, the battle started, when the first shots were fired, they still fought for a whole year to get their rights as English citizens back. They wanted to reconcile with the king because it, it was a horrible thought to break from the king. What would we do without a governor? And yet, after a year of fighting, they realized we should be free and independent people. But until, so the fighting's going on, but until that was internalized in their heart, till the consent left, till the consent that they gave to the king was gone, it, the war, the shooting didn't matter. It didn't change anything until the consent went away and they said, by right, we should be free and independent people. Right, it's the exact same outcome that you'd have if we had an American revolution right now. Nothing would People change. would be fighting to keep the government that they currently have. It makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's just in a lesser form or a, a rolled back form or what have you and what not. But they'd still have a government. Yeah. They'd have the exact uh, same people one. Are, uh, 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 like I say, people are tribal. They have to have somebody else around them to, uh, 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 to validate uh, 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 they have to have somebody else's decision to validate. Uh, uh, you've got a, a, a great group of people calling in here. Uh, 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 yeah. And uh, your education thing on, on, on bringing this all to four is, has been great. Uh, 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 I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you were talking a while ago about George Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh when the British surrendered to Washington, uh, uh, they were retreating out of North Carolina. Uh, 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 Green down there in North Carolina, I mean, uh, him and his boys, they, they had already whooped the British bad. Uh, 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 anyway, it, it, yeah, like I say, it, it, I, I just want to give you an out of guy. Uh, 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 Y'all are doing good. Uh, right, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it, and I appreciate it when you call in, because you always got something... You always make me think, and then I have to go and study and read some more. <laughs> Four, five, eight, talking. There are a lot of good people out there. We just need to the number keep it up. The number right. needs to go. And we have. We just need to bring people. them all together and form a new government. Oh, That's what oh I want man! To do. Why do we do and do that? Ultimately, you my know secret wish. Th there's something that needs to be said here, just as a kind of a disclaimer, is that sometimes because of the dry n delivery that you guys have with your sarcasm, that there are some people that honestly cannot tell. Sometimes when you're being sarcastic, when you're making a serious point. And because so many of the things that are talked about on this program are so revolutionary in nature and go so against the grain, they, people would never, what, not vote? Obviously, he must be being sarcastic. We definitely are not being sarcastic of such things. I just... We, we are, I know we get a little bit too sidetracked with, mostly because Aaron and I are brothers and we talk all the time, and so we have these inner conversations while we're on the radio and make fun of each other, so... But uh, we take what we're saying seriously. In fact, so seriously, we actually believe what we're saying. But 
Oh, wait a minute. I might have talked too soon. Aaron? No. I, I, okay. He popped up, so he's like, what? You believe what I'm what I was you gonna, just... I was going to be sarcastic, but I had to take Steve's point, and people might think I'm serial. I'm serious. Don't ever be serial. We got one more. Let's take him. Four or five They're actually calling, calling in. Is the number. No, they didn't. Whew. That's good. I don't want to think anymore. No, you can't get away from the, the thinking, Josh. I mean, one of the things that you have done to me is you've made me think. And you've, you know what, There are, you don't have to be a really good reader in the sense of uh, college level, no. master's degree or whatever, to be able to capture this stuff. There are a number of books out there that are written specifically to be able to transfer these ideas even to children. Yeah, Mayberry's books. Exactly. That's a great, great point. The, the, um, what's his name? The Uncle what series is it? Uncle Eric series. Uncle Eric series. Yeah. You, you, you look up those books, and you're going to be able to catch a lot of these concepts in ways that really make sense without being talked down to either. I mean, it's not like it's a, a child's book like, see, Dick, run. I, it's not no, like that, it's but, it, but it is not the... It's the great thing about his books is that... You know, I've already said it before, but my kids have read it and understand it, and yet at the same time, I can read it and go, wow, that was amazing. And I've asked people, other people I've given it to, they've read it and said, whoa, I got a lot out of that. Because, probably because liberty itself, being an individualist, is really pretty simple. Kind of like the gospel, right? A child can understand it. Right, exactly. Being free right. is pretty simple. I don't think I've ever given that book to anybody that didn't come back and say, "Oh wow, which one?" That change, um, whatever happened to whatever justice. happened to justice yeah. without them coming back and saying that it was it was life changing for them. And I I've, I've ordered it to the tune of twenty at a time, I think five different times and given it away. Um, and most of those people have given it away to somebody else. And every without exception, people have told me that. It was life-changing. So yeah. that's, that's going to be your action point today. Go out and get a copy of Whatever Happened to Justice. Or if you um, can't seem to locate one, um, you can contact us and jump on the Patriot Cement and leave a message or whatever you have to do. Or yeah, we try to fulfill our... Then. Let's give those, uh, that contact We try to fulfill our promises. <laughs> Patriot Cement. I've, I've gotten... .com. .com. .blogspot.com. And, and the email? PatriotsLament at gmail.com? Yes. I will yeah, I will buy you one if you will read it. Yeah, one one of the things I learned from owning the store there was uh, I gave away a lot of copies of that book for a long time, and I found that if you charge somebody even a dollar for a book, they're like 50 to 90% more likely to read it if they pay for it rather than get it for free, even if it's 50 cents that they paid for it. It's funny. Yeah, you can download Conceived in Liberty. That's heavy reading right there, but you can download that to your smartphone, your computer, for free. Well, I made the mistake of giving a couple of my really close friends um, books like uh, um, Discovery of Freedom and things of that nature, and they just they read them out of respect for me and couldn't comprehend it. And one of my friends in particular, he read two books that I asked him to, and... Um, one was a Rothbard book, uh, The Anatomy of the State, and he couldn't Ooh. he couldn't grasp them. And I gave him um, Whatever Happened to Justice, and he read that, and he came back and said, if you would have given me that first, I would have understood all these other books. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. Anatomy that, of the State, that's it, excellent. And if you think about it, uh, an awful lot of this, I think, comes from the approach that we've had in this country with the education system, where children are trained not to think. Mm -hmm. Sure. I read The Anatomy of the State four years ago, and looking back, now I read it again about three or four months ago, and I got ten times as much out of it reading it a couple months ago, and I think it absolutely had to do with, I mean, I, I didn't understand it the first time I read it. What uh, What is Jefferson's, uh, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but basically he said, um, if one thinks they can be free and stupid... They're hoping for something that never was. If you think you're going to have liberty or freedom and be ignorant of those things, it's not going to happen. You have to educate yourself on what these matters mean. And 
That doesn't mean listening to a politician telling you what your freedoms are. Hang on. Are you telling me that I might have to give up watching a football game and and read something? Oh, I hate for that to happen. (laughs) Give up watching American Idol? What? I I think it goes back to what we said there in the the first hour. It's people... In, in myself included, I, I don't think anybody's exempt from being only being able to hear what they understand. And like I read the Anatomy of the State, it's a short book. Um, I mean, it's about the thickness of a pamphlet, and I couldn't understand it. I couldn't even hear what it was trying to tell me because I couldn't understand it. And I had to read simpler books like Whatever Happened to Justice and Whatever Happened to Penny Candy to be able to go back and read something more complicated. You know, I I made a point to read the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, and I couldn't grasp anything that they were talking about for the longest time. That's heavy reading. Sure. Because they're all homeschooled, and they're like, Phew. All right, I wanted to understand <laughs> where they were coming from, and mm-hmm. I can, well, without being ashamed, say that I read the whole Federalist Papers without understanding one thing that they said. And by the time I got to the Anti-Federalist Papers, I had delved into some much simpler books and was able to see it a lot clearer. That's probably a good thing, though. The Anti-Federalist Papers are a lot better reading, anyway. Maybe I wanted to understand those a little bit. Is that why you're an (laughs) Anti-Federalist? Yeah, that's interesting. All All four lines are on hold. I like what you said, though. You wanted to understand what what they meant. That's what... That's the biggest reason why I like to read the history of stuff is because I like to understand. I want to know what was in their mind. Sure. and you I feel like if I know what's in their mind, then I can understand what they meant for now. You exposed me to that when you gave me the, um, the ruling of Georgia versus Chisholm, mm-hmm. and I couldn't grasp where they were coming from, and that drove me nuts. So I went back to see where all those guys would have got the original thought from. Yeah, Georgia versus Chisholm, fantastic landmark decision by the first Supreme Court of America. Highly recommended reading. Which normally, like, oh, why would I want to read a court case? Because the foundations of the American experiment are in that case. Yeah, and they even say that. The the judges in their statements. So that's all you're reading is the statements from the, the Supreme Court. And they're talking about the original intent of the founding. And you can believe them because they are the founders. <laughs> John Jay is one of them, and he's basically, you know, they call Madison the father of the Constitution, but John Jay was the legal mind they looked to to say, is this correct? Because he was brilliant. Well, what, what about the idea that the Constitution is a living document? That was never... That's so new to theory. It's not well, even in summary. What was the what was the summary behind Georgia versus Chisholm? What was their ultimate? The summary behind it, the the end state was the the people, the individual, was sovereign over the state and over the federal government, and that the the sovereign person, when we no longer had a king who was sovereign at the time. No longer have a king, so the sovereignty fell on the people. And people don't even understand what that word means. They go off in sovereignty movements and say they're sovereign citizens and garbage. But the sovereignty delved on the people, and it was their consent that the state governments were allowed to exist. Right, and the state constraint. was trying to sue Chisholm. Georgia was trying to sue Chisholm. Right. And ultimately, the Supreme Court ruled that it was impossible for the servant to sue the master because the the individual was sovereign and created the state, and the state was sovereign over the federal government because they created them. Right. The creator, the created, cannot rule over the creator. That's basically what it came down to. The man was the ultimate sovereign in the state, which has totally been 180 it's definitely been flopped for sure the the individual has no liberty it's actually the reason for the 11th amendment because the states freaked out and said Whoa, wait a minute we need to pass it so right there right off the bat 1798 i think it was the 11th amendment comes out to say well <laughs> states can oppress people legally no it was Come actually out. chisholm sued georgia that was the whole thing georgia said we're a sovereign state oh, you can't right. sue us and the Supreme Court, John Jay said, you're not sovereign. This man is sovereign. He created you. 
So of course he can sue you in court. And the 11th Amendment changed some of that, which eh, didn't really change the core of the matter. So though. right there then by the very beginning, from the very beginning with those amendments and the amendment process, our Constitution is a living document. As long as we continue to amend it, we continue to change the law. Right, there's a foundation though for it to happen. I mean, you can't, like these executive orders and stuff, that's not well, I'm, I'm part of the living document, but there was a process, and the reason there was a process is because the process is very difficult. I'm beginning to wonder if the Constitution have. itself was a bad idea. Absolutely. That that by, by sitting down and writing down these this law of the land, if we weren't you know, creating a framework by which to hang. We're going to go out and build the, ha the, the gallows by which we're going to hang ourselves. Madison himself, who was the father of the Constitution, several years later said if the people knew that this was going to be turned into this, that this Constitution would be turned around and twisted to look this way, they would have never ratified it in the first place. And how many years was that? I mean, that wasn't... No, it was within 10 years. Within 10 years. So we had the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions was directly to counteract what the federal government said that their new powers were. And they said no. Sounds like the end of the show. It does. Sounds like a good song. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> you take a mortal man, you put him in control. Watch him become a god, watch the people's heads roll. Yeah, download De La Boite's, uh Whatever it's called. <laughs> well, and, but that's 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 heavier reading. Start light. You read whatever, whatever happened, happened to justice, justice and see if it doesn't change the way you view everything. But then call us next week and we'll discuss. Yeah, and it's it's a it's what a one two evening read. If, You're done. Yeah, an hour. Very easy. All right, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Patriots Lament on KFAR Health Talk is next. <laughs>